In this video, we will examine the algebraic properties of the dot product. So we'll state and prove useful algebraic properties. We'll look at a quick example, and then we'll provide another proof that the dot product of u and v gives you the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle in between those two um, vectors. So you should know the definition of the dot product. If you express u and v in components, then u dot v is simply the sum of the product of like components. And you've probably already seen a proof that the dot product is commutative. So how would this proof look? You'd pick any two vectors, express them in component form. You'd apply the definition of u dot v to get this quantity. But the usual properties of real numbers under multiplication tell you that you can commute the order of operations there. So AP plus BQ is equal to PA plus QB. And now you recognize that this is what you get if you took V dot U according to your definition. So indeed, it's the case that U dot V is always going to be equal to V dot U no matter which two vectors you pick. You'll notice there was nothing special about U and V. Uh, these four quantities, A, B, P, and Q, could be anything. So our next property, we claim the dot product distributes across vector addition. So what do we mean by this? If you take u dot the quantity v plus w, then you can actually distribute that dot product to get u dot v plus u dot w. So the dot product distributes across vector addition. So what does our proof look like? Once again, we're going to pick three arbitrary vectors they, we're making no special claims about them. So uh, we'll, we'll just have these component forms. And now we're going to clear the decks here um, to get some space. Let's see what you get when you take u and dot it into the sum of v and w. So we'll fill in all the components. And we'll perform our vector addition first. Now we're in a position to be able to apply the dot product. And here's where we've now reduced it to just the usual operations on real numbers, and we can mix things around with commutativity and associativity and what have you. And we can recognize now that's a dot product and that's a dot product. And when we fill in our definition of those dot products, we see that we obtain u dot v and u dot w. So indeed, it is true that u dot v plus w is the same as u dot v plus u dot w. The dot product distributes across vector addition. Now, hopefully you notice that um, we only distributed from the left side. So the question is, can we distribute from the right? In other words, is it true that if you took the sum of two vectors and then dotted it into a vector product on the right side, does that distribute in the same way? Is that equal to v dot u plus w dot u? Now, the answer is surely yes. And you could repeat the same kind of proof we just provided for the uh, first distribution property. but Let's not repeat ourselves as possible. Let's see if we can use all the known facts about the dot product to reproduce this proof in a slicker way. So if we start with v plus w dot u, well, we've already proved that the dot product is commutative. So we could rewrite it as u dot v plus w. Now you've got a situation where you can apply the distribution property from the left. We already proved that. So we know that's legit. And now, individually, v uh, u dot v is equal to v dot u, and u dot w is equal to w dot u because the dot product is commutative. There's what we hope to prove. In fact, it's true that you can distribute across, you know, from the right side. The next property we claim is that scalar multiplication associates with the dot product. So let's take a few moments to see what we mean by that. Suppose you have a scalar k and vectors u and v. Now, you could scale u by the factor k, scalar multiplication, and then you could take the dot product of the result with v. But you could also take the dot product of u and v first and then multiply the result by the number k. So these are two different kinds of combinations of these operations, and the claim is that you get the same thing either way. So there's an associativity property. Um, you can either scale and uh, scale the vector, then take the dot product, or you can take the dot product and scale the result, and it doesn't matter. So what does our proof look like? 
Um, here are our components for the vectors, and we're just going to use brute force to prove this. So we're going to replace the components and then carefully apply our definitions. Here's scalar multiplication. Here's our dot product. We'll use algebra to factor out the k, recognize a dot product, and then recognize our definitions of u and v, and there it is. So ku dot v is the same as k times the quantity u dot v. So we get the associativity property. And as was the case with the dis distributive property, we could ask, you know, does this associate in the other spot as well? Is it true that if you took u dot kv, it's the same as k times the quantity u dot v? Once again, the answer is certainly yes. It's got to be true. And there's probably a brute force proof we could use. But once again, let's see if we can apply everything we've proved already to get this for free. So u dot kv is the same as kv dot u. That's the fact that the dot product's commutative. Now we already have the associativity property on the left side. And now, once again, we apply the commutativity to see that this is the same as k times u dot v. So there you go. You can associate um, with the scalar uh, multiplication either the left spot or the right spot within that dot product. So what have we got? For all scalars k and vectors u, v, and w, you've got the following algebraic properties. The dot product's commutative. You have a, dis a distributive property from the left as well as the right and you have this associativity from the left and the right when you're taking the dot product. These are all valuable properties if, and, and you should certainly, they should be in your reading vocabulary. That is to say, when you see it happen, you should say, oh yes, of course that's true. But more importantly, they should be in your speaking vocabulary, which is to say, when you're doing a math problem, you should be able to invoke these when you need, when you need them to make your calculations easier. They can really uh, simplify what you're trying to do. So let's practice. This is a silly example. We're going to take the dot product of these two somewhat complicated looking vectors. And to be honest, it's not that hard to just do it directly. I mean, we could just take the dot product. And if you wanted to um, make this look a little better, you could easily uh, write it as one fraction. It's really not that hard. So it's not like we're going to use um, uh, a property to make this much easier because it's already OK. But let's test drive the associativity of scalar multiplication. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite both vectors by scaling them. We're going to pull out a factor of 1 3rd from the first vector. We're going to pull out a factor of 1 over root 3 from the second vector and arguably make the components on the inside look slightly nicer. Now we're taking the dot product of these two vectors. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that we can pull out these scalar multiples of the vectors when we take the dot product scalar multiplication associates with the dot product. So we can pull those factors out separately and just sort of look at the remaining vector dot product on the inside. And of course, we get the same answer as we did before. It's easily recognized as the same thing we got before. So again, in this problem, the payoff's not so great. But there are problems for which you really want to uh, be aware of this uh, option of, of pulling out scalar factors in your dot product. So we're going to end with a uh, proof. Uh, this is a formula that you may have seen before. u dot v is equal to the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle in between. And we're going to use some of the algebraic properties we just studied to give a slick algebraic proof of this. But it is the proof is also based on the law of cosine. So let's suppose you have vectors u and v. and we're also going to introduce a vector that goes from the tip of v to the tip of u, and this would be u minus v. Convince yourself this is right. v plus u minus v should be u, and it is. So uh, that vector is u minus v. Now the law of cosine says if you have a triangle whose lengths are a, b, and c, and this angle theta here between these two sides, um, the law of cosine says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. It looks like the Pythagorean theorem with a little bit of an adjustment. You can think of the law of cosines that way. So there's our law of cosines. So we're just going to set this off to the side. And we're going to return to our vector picture. And we're going to translate the law of cosines uh, in, into this vector picture. And we'll notice that the lengths of these triangles, uh, of the sides of this triangle, are the norm of u, the norm of v, and the norm of u minus v. 
So when we replace these lengths into the law of cosines, you'll get an equation that looks like this. Now we really want to concentrate on this left-hand term first. What is the square of the norm of u minus v? Well, we know the square of the norm of any vector is the dot product of the vector with itself. So the norm of u minus v is u minus v dot u minus v. And here's where our algebraic properties are going to come in handy. We're going to distribute from the right, and then we've got two terms where we can distribute the dot product from the left, and we get u dot u minus u dot v minus v dot u plus v dot v. And u dot v and v dot u are equal. That's the commutativity of the dot product. So actually, we can rewrite this expression as u dot u plus v dot v minus twice u dot v. So that's what our left-hand side of the law of cosines really looks like when we interpret it in terms of the dot product. And of course, the norm squared of u and the norm squared of v can also be rewritten using the dot product. So there's u dot u and v dot v on the right side. Now we're really close because we can cancel u dot u and v dot v. Those quantities cancel from both sides. Now we get this equation, and we can divide through by negative 2. Lo and behold, there it is. u dot v is equal to the norm of u, norm of v, cosine theta.